Hallelujah. Amen. Today I want to talk about how important it is for us to have a stronger spiritual life. And to serve God. Many people think it's not so important. They will just say, I have too many problems. I have no strength. And some people might think to be a Christian is, you know, it's, uh, sometimes it's difficult. To them, it takes a lot of work. Then uh, people think they have to do a lot. If they just think of what to do, they might say, well, I have to pray, I have to read the Bible. And I have to serve God. And then some people might think, it's, this is too much. There are some people who say, I have too many problems at home. I have too many emotional problems. I have no strength. But let me tell you, when you follow God's way, you have more strength. When you serve God, you have more strength and more blessings. When people just look at their problems, they'll say, it's difficult. When they say, oh, there's so many people who have, who have problems. I have no strength to handle the problems. Then they will find life difficult. You know, God is good. When we're with God all the time and do what He wants us to do, we'll have strength. Now today I'll talk about five points. And I encourage you to write down the five points. It will help you spiritually. It also will help you when you help other Christians to be stronger. Or when you train people to serve God. So I hope you write this down. The first point is everything is in God's hand and no one can run away. Everything is in God's hand and no one can run away. Now the, I'm going to just tell you the five points now and then I'll go back to the first point. And, and the second point is Following and obeying God will bring blessings. So following and obeying God will bring blessings. And the third point is, serving God will bring reward. Serving God will bring reward. And then the fourth touch. Fourth point, living in sins will bring destruction. Living in sin will bring destruction. And then the fifth point, not bearing fruit will bring destruction. Not bearing fruit will bring destruction. Now you can think of it like in a house. On top of the house is the first point. Everything is in God's hand and no one can run away. And then when you, when you follow and obey Him, it will bring blessings. And when you serve God, it will bring reward. And then on the left side, living in sins will bring destruction. Not bearing fruit will bring destruction. So basically what it says is, everything is in God's hand. When you follow him and serve him, it will bring blessings. 
Jesus. When you don't follow him and you don't serve God, it will bring destruction. So I hope you say, yes, I want to serve God. I want to love God. You know, in, in Chinese there is an expression. In Chinese there is an expression. The chicken cannot run away. What it means is, you know, you, you raise some chicken, you let it go around, they cannot, I mean, it looks like they can run away, but the chicken won't run away. So, in God's hand, we cannot run away, but something will always say, God might not see it. If I do something bad, God might not see it. I might escape his eyes. I wait until I'm very old and then I'll serve God. Because many people think not serving, you know, serving God is difficult. But I tell you, serving God is great. God, God knows your heart. And he will bless you. So I hope you say, yes, Lord. You are good. Okay, now we go to the first point now. Everything is in God's hand and no one can run away. Psalm 24, 1. The earth is the Lord's and everything in it. The earth is the Lord's, everything is the Lord's. And everything that is in it. My life is the Lord's. My money is the Lord's. Everything I have is the Lord's. Now some people think my money is mine. I have control over my money. I want to make more money. But let me tell you, all, all the money belongs to God. When you follow God and do your responsibility, He will bless your life. And he'll provide for you. Let me tell you, when my first wife about, uh, you know, he, she had cancer and then she passed away. In 2008. At one point, all my money was used up. But I always have this heart to serve God. And God opens the way to provide for me. And now I have the money to go to different countries. To go to different places to bless the people. Because God knows our heart. God knows your heart. Whether you love God or not, your heart is in the hand of God. You cannot run away from God. You know, the Bible talks about at the end of the world, people will say, mountains fall on me. Cover me. So I can hide from the face of God. But let me tell you, no one can run away from him. No one can run away from God. When you say mountains cover me, you won't be able to hide from God. So can everyone say, can everyone say together? I cannot hide myself from God. God will see everything I do. God sees my heart. When I love God, God is 
happy with me. Mungu atafurahia nani? Mungu atafurahia. And he'll bless me. Na atanibariki. I thank God I, I know people who go to heaven when they pray. Nashukuru Mungu kwa sababu unajua watu ambao wanaenda mbinguni wakati wanaomba. And there is one person in Hong Kong who goes to heaven many times when she prays. Na kuna kuna mtu mmoja ambaye anaenda kule Hong Kong ambaye wakati akiomba anaenda mbinguni akirudi na mbinguni akirudi. And when she went to heaven she saw the book of the record of rewards. Na wakati alipoenda kule mbinguni akaonyeshwa kitabu ambacho kimenakiliwa zile za wadi ambazo zinaisaidia tuweze kupata. She saw her own book of record of the reward. Akaona kitabu chake ambacho kimenakiliwa za wadi zake. That means it record everything she has done for God. Na hivyo inamaanisha kwamba chini kimenakiliwa kila kitu ambacho amefanya kwa ajili ya Mungu. And it will record what kind of rewards she will have. Na pia wanaweka chini aina ya zawadi ambazo zitaikuwa kupata. Because I have prayed for her to experience the Holy Spirit. Kwa sababu nimeomba ili aweze kuishi roho mtakatifu and drive the demons from her and help her to grow spiritually so she said to Jesus please show me pastor you spoke of record of reward she is curious to see what kind of reward I will get And then Jesus told an angel to get my book of record of re reward. And yes, so I malaika ila kaweza kuleta kitabu cha kitada cha dawa. And then she said it's thick. It's thick. The book is thick. Then akasema kwamba si halali. It's covered with gold. Kwamba hiyo kitabu ni kinoro lakini kimefunikwa na dhahabu. And also on top it says my beloved son Timothy here. Na kwa jina juu yake imeandikwa kwamba mwana wangu mpendwa Timothy here. Now When I heard that I I said to God Lord I'm not worthy. Because I failed you so many times. It is you who have raised me up. I'm not special. It's you who is special. And you have Bless me and raise me up. Na umenibariki na ukaninua tu. I'm more than happy to serve you. Na mimi nimekuwa na furaha kutumikia. I'm very happy with God. Kwamba nafurahia na Mungu. And so I willingly go to different places to bless the people. Hivi kwa nenda kila sehemu sehemu tofauti tofauti ili kabariki watu. You know I try to get more opportunities to bless the people. Wana jaribu nipate nafasi nyingi ya kubariki watu. And God is happy with that. Na Mungu anafurahia na hiyo. But I want to say it's not me. Kama nataka kusema si mimi. It's God who changed me. Kama ni Mungu ambaye alinibadilisha. And I want to say I'm not worthy. Kama nataka kusema mimi si sahihi. And when I share this with you. Lakini wakati na kushiriki haya nani? I'm not saying I'm special. Usiseme kwamba mimi mtu pekee. I'm just saying God can raise you up and use you too. Nasema tu Mungu anaweza kuinua na biwe akutumie. When you are willing to serve God wholeheartedly. Kama utaenda kutumikia Mungu na moyo wako wote. God knows your heart. Mungu anajua moyo wako. When you have the heart to love God, kama uko na moyo wa kupenda Mungu, he is very happy with you. Yeye ana nafurahia na wewe. And you will also have a thick book of record of rewards. Na pia wewe utakuwa na kitabu kinene ambacho kimeonekana chini ya dawa zako. Because everything is in God's hand. Kwa sababu kila kitu kwa mikono ya Mungu. No one can run away from God. Hakuna yote ambaye anaweza kutoka kutoka Mungu. The chicken cannot run away from your house. Kwamba kuku haiwezi kutoka kutoka nyumba kwa nyumba yake. And you cannot run away from God too. Na uwezi kutoka kutoka kwa Mungu pia. Now in uh, different places in Romans 2 chapter 3 and uh, chapter 2 verse 3 katika warumi msula ya pili msari wa 23 at the end of the verse it says do you think you will escape god's judgment au inasema je unadhani utaweza kutoroka hukumu ya mungu you know some people say well i just live my own life mtu anasema tu pengine acha nikaishi maisha i won't follow god kwa maana tunafuata mungu And some people think I can escape God's eyes. Na wana watu wengine wengine wanadhani kwamba wataweza kutoroka macho ya Mungu. And escape God's judgment. Na kuhepa hata hukumu ya Mungu. But no one can run away from God. Lakini hakuna yote ambaye anaweza kutoroka macho ya Bwana. Now, in many countries, in many shops there are electric camera on the wall. Katika nchi nyingi katika katika maduka kuna zile kamera ama zile zile vyombo za kupiga picha katika ukuta. I don't know if you have it in this country. Yes. Okay. I know one person, Najomu Tumoza. 
She went into the shop and saw something she liked. And she thought she could escape the eyes of the camera. She got a magazine to cover her hand and she took something from the shelf and put it in her pocket. But the people in the shop saw that and took hold of her and then searched her, her, her clothing and found what she stole and she has to go to court and has to go to jail and it is foolish but people thought they could escape the eyes of the camera but I tell you even if you can escape the camera you cannot escape God's eyes not only does he see your action not only does he see your action, he sees your heart. In your heart, do you like God? Do you thank God? Do you want to serve God? He knows your heart. Many people go to church and they say, I just want to get friends. I just want to get help. But if you want me to pay a price to serve God, I will not serve God. So many people think, I can escape God's eyes. It is foolish. Let's say it together. It is foolish to think that we can escape God's eyes. And then in Revelation 2.23 And the second part In, in the second part of the verse Then Revelation 2.23 Then all the churches will know that I am he who searches hearts and minds And I will repay each of you according to your deed he searches our hearts. What is in our heart? What is in our mind? If we are angry with people, when we don't like people, when we don't want to help people, when we don't appreciate God, God knows our heart. And He will repay each one of us according to our deed. So when He knows your heart, knows what you're thinking, knows what you want to get, and knows your action, one day He will repay you according to according to what you do. Now some people could be serving God but inside he wants people to look at them. Now they could be a leading worship but if they think of oh, people will look at me and see how well I sing how special I am God will see it. And then when God sees it, God is not happy. So when we serve God, it is best to say that God is so good. God has blessed me in so many ways. I really want to thank God. I really want to love God. I really want to serve people. And then God knows your heart. God will reward you. You know, I have put many videos on the internet. And you look for Pastor Yip Yip. On Facebook and YouTube. And you can find my videos. 
Uh, videos of many teachings. Uh, now many of these videos are in Chinese. Now is the Chinese. But there are also a number in English. And many people watch the video. And then they reach me, they call me up or send me an email or message. And ask for help. Now, when I now sometimes some people know me and then they say, I have a friend who is in the hospital. I have someone in need. Can you find time to visit the person? Now I will tell people you do the visitation first. Because there are too many people to visit. But if the person thinks it's needy that I should visit. I will go to visit. When I go to visit, it's very important that I have this heart in my mind that I say, yes, I want to bless this person. It's very important that in my heart, I don't say, I really don't want to go. It takes too much time. And the person is not open. If I have that heart, God knows it. And God doesn't like it. Now some people, the, 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 the church might ask you to serve God. Maybe you just, uh, wash the dishes. Maybe to go and do evangelism. And you say, well, the weather is so hot. It's so difficult. It takes too much of my time. And in your heart, you grumble. You say, that's too much work. Get someone else to do it. God knows your heart. No one can escape. Right now, you see a ceiling on top of you. One day, on the day of judgment, you find that God shows every day of our lives. Now Paul has talked about this. We have become like a show to the whole world. To all the people and to the angels. Of what we do. So think of it like now when you are in the worship service. Some of you will be saying, yes, I want to follow God. But some people might say, I'm not going to take that seriously. You can preach all you want. I'm just going to think about my home. I'm going to think about what I'm going to eat at lunchtime. I'm going to think about my troubles. But I'm not going to pay attention to what you say. And I'm not going to do what you say. But let me tell you, on a day of judgment, we'll go through this day again. And the ceiling will be gone. The whole world will be sitting around you. Seeing our hearts. See what you are doing. Not only here, when you are at home, when you are yelling at your husband or wife, when you are yelling at your husband or wife, when you are angry with your husband or wife, God will show all these. Everything we do, everything we think, will be shown to the whole world. When you think about this, do you want to say, yes, Lord, I cannot escape your eyes. I have to be careful what I do. But let me tell you, to serve God is not 
something under pressure. You can actually enjoy God's presence. You enjoy God's blessing when you pray to God. When you serve God, you think of God remembering everything you do. Maybe you're serving God under the sun, very hot. But you say God remembers everything. So I serve God willingly. And some people when they pray, they say I'm bored. Or oh, how long do I have to pray? But let me tell you, if you pray like that, God doesn't like it. But if you say, God is so good, Hallelujah. I want to enjoy God's presence. It's so good to pray to God. So good to enjoy Him. God is happy with you. So everyone say, No one can run away from God's eyes. God will see our hearts. God will see our action. So when you are with your family, whatever you say or do, or your anger, everything cannot escape God's eyes. So hope you will say, I will love people wholeheartedly. I'll bless people wholeheartedly. I will glorify God in everything I do. Hallelujah. So, first point is everything is in God's hand. And no one can run away. And I hope you put this in your memory. I cannot run away from God. Say it. I cannot run away from God. And then the next point, following and obeying God will bring blessings. When we follow God and love Him and obey Him, He will bless us. Matthew 6, 33. But seek first His kingdom and His righteousness, and all these things will be given to you. So what it means is you really care about the kingdom of God. Now, there are three kingdoms of God. Can you write this down? First is the kingdom of grace. That there, there is salvation and grace and blessings of God. So you want more people to enter the kingdom of grace. You want more people saved that is seeking the kingdom of God. And the next is the kingdom of Lordship. That when Jesus is the Lord, now, let me tell you, this is the same kingdom. It's the same kingdom. But it talks about that wherever Jesus is the Lord, there is the kingdom of Lordship. Now, in heaven, everyone totally obey God. Even when someone is unhappy with someone on earth, but in heaven, they will be very happy to see each other. There is no anger and frustration. And everyone in heaven will be happy. But how about on earth? At your home. Is there, are, there, are there fights or anger at your home? Or is there love and joy in your home? Do you let God be the Lord in your home? How about 
How about in your church? Do some people dislike other people? Do some people gossip about, about other people? When they do that, then Jesus is not the Lord. Let me tell you, many churches might have fights. People are unhappy about each other. And, or they gossip about each other. Or in their heart, people just don't like someone. Let me ask you, are there, are there some people you don't like around you? If you don't like somebody, God knows it. And then you're not letting God be your Lord. But if you say, my, in my home, I want God to be Lord. I want God to rule over everything. Everything I say will make people blessed would help other people and in a church I will serve God and love people and help people to love each other then you are seeking the kingdom of worship and Jesus is happy with you if whatever you do you seek God's pleasure you want to make God happy and, and then also the third is the kingdom of glory when Jesus comes back and you say Lord Jesus I want to prepare the world to welcome you back you know the kingdom that the gospel has to be spread to the whole world before Jesus will come back so you say Lord I will spread the gospel to more people to prepare for your second coming let me ask you is the kingdom of God is what you want or you just want blessing to yourself many people who go to church they just want blessings to themselves they just want help to themselves now it's good it's right that we ask for help from God but after we get help from God I hope you will seek the kingdom of God you care about God's kingdom let me tell you I go to different countries in some places I heard that the percentage of Christians is very high but I ask the pastors to the people of God and the pastor says sometimes even though the percentage is high some of them are just you know nominal Christians Christians by name Many of these Christians don't really love God. And they are not even sure about salvation. When I heard this, I feel sad. Because I care about the kingdom of God. I don't belong to this country. But I care about your country. I don't belong to your churches. But I care about your churches. I want to do whatever I can do to help. Because I care about the kingdom of God. Do you care about the kingdom of God? Do you want more people blessed? Do you want people to love God more? When you love God more and serve God all the time, 
Your testimony will affect other people. So when you seek first the kingdom of God, God will bring you blessings. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And then in Psalm 34 verse 10. The lions may grow weak and hungry, but those who seek the Lord lack no good thing. The lions are strong, but sometimes they cannot get the food. But those who seek the Lord will lack no good things. When you follow God totally, He will bless you in everything. When I follow God, I found that God has blessed me in every way. God has provided for me financially. So I can go to different countries. God has blessed me with a wonderful wife. That she loves me very much. And helps me in my ministry. God has given me health. I'm 65 years old already. But God makes me strong. And I can play tennis. And I don't need eyeglasses. To see small letters, I don't need eyeglasses. And God has given me a sharp mind. God has given me a strong presence of God, a strong anointing. In every meeting, there were people blessed by the Holy Spirit. Do you want to be like that too? You know, many people want more money. But they try their own way. They don't see God. They just worry. I want more money. I need help. I want my family to be better. Oh, I'm suffering. Oh, me, me, America. But you look at the problems. Like, you know, the they don't get help. Our bottom side, uh, problems don't help you. God can help you. God is almighty. So when you have when you are in trouble, you say, Lord, you can help me. You know, there are many times when I pray, I found that God helped me in miraculous ways. Let me tell you, there were three times I almost had a, had a car accident and could have died. One time I was driving on the freeway at a high speed. But there was ice on the road that I did not know. There was ice on the road that I did not know. But because there was no ice and no snow around. But I went to one spot and there was ice. And the car spin. And it passed another lane. It passed another lane. And then go to the partition of the freeway. Immediately when I stop, a big truck passed by. If I had spent one split second earlier, or later, I could have been hit by the truck. And I thank God that God gave me life and anytime I'm happy to go to heaven I like God and I like heaven but I want to serve God longer I want to serve God longer and at a time I was about to hit a car you know, in a very short distance and I said, Lord Jesus, I didn't 
know I have to come to you so soon. But in the last moment, that car turned away. I don't know where it finds its place to turn away. Now, all these things I remember. God is good. You find miracles follow you. You know, as I said, when I uh, went to another country, I was supposed to go on the next plane, and I waited for a long time, and I fell asleep, and the plane has left. And then they told me you have to rebook your ticket. That's a lot of trouble. And I have to pay more money. And then I asked the person three times to ask whether you can help me. For two times she said, no, I cannot help you. And I kept praying to the Lord. And I say, God, you can help. But in the, the third time when I asked her, she made a phone call. And then she said, the plane came back. You know, later I asked the people, and the people said, the plane just had problems. And they could not fix it. So the plane came back. So I could get on the plane without pain. Let me tell you, God is good. God can give you strength. When you pray to Him all the time, when you obey Him and love Him, He will bless you in every way. You will be full of testimonies. I have testimonies every week. Like this week here, there are a number of testimonies that you have given. How God healed and brought blessings. Do you want to be like that? When I talk about people, if you, are, if you are like that, you'll be able to bring many people to Jesus here. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Okay, the third point, serving God will bring reward. Now, some people think of serving God as something difficult. In Mark 9, 41, Jesus said, In Mark 9, 41, where it says that truly I tell you, anyone who gives you a cup of water in my name because you belong to the Messiah will certainly not lose the reward. So when you give a cup of cold water to a Christian, you will not lose your reward. When you help a Christian, you will not lose the reward. When you help the pastor or the leaders, you will not lose your reward. When you wash the dishes because you love God, you will not lose your reward. When you greet the person next to you with love, you will not lose the reward. Can you now say to the person next to you, God loves you and I love you? With a smile, with a smile. When you hear about the people who come to this church and greet them and talk to them and pray for them, you will not lose your reward. You'll be rewarded forever. If you just have this heart, I want to serve God. I want to tell people about Jesus. Yes, even if they don't believe. You will not lose your reward. Now, I'd like you to say that. 
Even when you try to bring someone to Jesus and that person doesn't believe. You will not lose your reward. Hallelujah. So anytime you worship God and you love God and serve God with your with a love for God, you will not lose the reward. Hallelujah. Amen. And then Matthew 25, 23. And the master said to the servant, Well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Come and share your master's happiness. That is Matthew 25, 23. So when you serve God willingly, Jesus will say to you, come in and share my happiness. And then you enter heaven. You say, wow, heaven is so full of joy. Heaven is so beautiful. Heaven is full of great people. Heaven is enjoyable. And God will remember everything you've done for Him. Do you want to go to heaven one day? Do you want to enjoy His happiness? So today, pray to God more. Don't look at your problems. When someone says something negative to you, don't think about it. If he says you fall, you won't become a fool. If he says you're useless, you won't become useless. You don't have to think about the words. Discern the people around you. When there are angry people, negative people, they might always talk negatively. Do you know people who talk negatively? But many people take the word seriously. Don't take the word seriously. If they say you fall, you won't die. You just don't take it seriously. But many people take those words seriously. For many years. I use this illustration. If someone pours some dung or feces at you, do you say, I want it, I want it? Or do you run away? You run away, right? If it gets on your clothes, do you go home? And smell it. It's terrible. It's terrible. It's terrible. But the is terrible. But you want to wash yourself, right? But some people that keep thinking about the negative words of people, day after day, that person is terrible. Every day for tens of years. That is painful, right? So you want to forget negative words. It doesn't matter. You won't die. Look to the Lord and rejoice in the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, I'm going to talk about the last two points about when, what if people don't follow God. So number four, living in sins will bring destruction. Galatians chapter 6 verse 8. I mean, Galatians, Galatia. Whoever sows to please the flesh, from the flesh will reap destruction. 
au wale ambao wanapanda ili wakafurahishe mili zao wataweza kuvunda kutoka kwa wataweza kuvuna uharibifu now say that again galatians 6:8 au ni so if anyone follow the flesh kwa hivyo kama mtu atafuata mume mwili wake just to please the flesh ili akaweze kujifurahisha mwenyewe from the flesh will reap destruction kwa hivyo kutoka na mwili utaweza kuvunda uharibifu like if people just want to be angry kama watu wanataka kukasirika tu many people think that talk uh, you know talking loudly is the winner and some people think getting angry i'm the winner because if they're angry then people are afraid of them <laughs> they think they're the winner but these are lies it will only bring destruction I've heard that in some countries there is a lot of sexual immorality. People have immortal and immoral sex life. Or they have sex with more than one person. And they think they enjoy it. But they will reap destruction. They will go to hell forever. Now many men when they date a woman, it means they want to hug and kiss and have sex. It's a fact that many men when they date, they just think of sex. Let me tell you, it will bring destruction. But if you follow God, God will bless you. Let me tell you, many, many men, they give love in order to get sex. So when they're dating, they try to make the woman happy. To make the woman believe that that he really loves her. But actually they want sex. And many women think I give him sex and then he will love me. Let me tell you. Actually, Giving sex won't get love. And many people, their lives are ruined. So if a man said to you, say to you, oh, have sex with me and then I'll love you, I'll marry you. And then you say, we'll have sex after we get married. And then you say, we'll have sex after we get married. So I hope you follow God in every way. I women, they get pregnant before marriage and the men went away. And the whole life is in misery. They thought they would get the men. But they only get pain. So when you sow to the flesh, you reap destruction. And I heard that there are also some men who like to have sex with different women. They think they are a winner. But actually, the whole life is ruined. And God doesn't like it. Now on the internet, many people watch pornography and they think this is enjoyable but it actually will destroy your life okay and then the next point in John chapter 5 verse 14 you can say the verse again every time there was a man who was sick for 38 years. And he could not walk. And then Jesus came and healed him. And then Jesus said to him, 
Seeing you are well again, start sinning or something worse may happen to you. Sasa wana kwa uko vizuri mara nyingine tena. Wacha kutenda dhambi ama kitu kibaya zaidi kinatendeka kwako. This person has suffered for 38 years. Ambao huyu mtu anaathirika kwa miaka 38. And Jesus said, yes, you are healed now. But if you sin, something worse will happen to you. You can get sick for longer, for a longer time. Maybe you get sick for your whole lifetime. Maybe you get demons. So it's very important to remember that. Living in sin. In anger, in anger, being frustrated, being frustrated with people, it is sin. Or worry, or being unhappy, all this will bring destruction. Many Christians say, I believe in Jesus. How come my family has so many problems? When they look at their life, they get angry easily at home. They yell at each other. They don't care for each other. Now when they live like that, they are bringing destruction to their family. So this point is, if we sin and we don't follow God, it will bring destruction. And then the last point, not bearing fruit will bring destruction. Or not serving God will bring destruction. Now some people think, there are other people who serve God. I just come to church. I'm not going to serve God. But let me tell you, Jesus has warned. Jesus said, everyone who have received spiritual gifts. One servant received 5,000, another servant 2,000, another 1,000. And the one who received 1,000 buried in the ground. Not only will he lose the 1,000, he is cast out into darkness. And then Matthew chapter 25. Matayo ishirina tano Verse 26 to verse 30 Musari wa ishirina sita hadi adi thalathini Matayo ishirina tano Musari wa ishirina sita hadi thalathini In Matthew 26 The master said You wicked lazy servant Ali kina sema hivi Uwe musamisa kamambia Kamambia mchakazi wake Wewe mtu mwovu Ambaya Ambaya mzende uh, did you read down here? Uh, verse 30. Throw that worthless servant outside into the darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. And verse 45. Whoever, whatever you did for one of this, the least, the one of the smallest one, you did it for me. And then, when you did not do it, you did not do it to me. Then they will go into eternal punishment and the righteous into eternal life. So when you serve God and bless a little one, Help a new person to believe in Jesus and follow Jesus, you will not lose your reward. But if you don't do it, your whole lifetime you don't serve God. Jesus will say, You are lazy and wicked servant. There are many people that go to heaven. Standing in front of God, and thought they can enter heaven. 
But Jesus said, "You only believe in your mind. You don't follow me. You don't love me. You don't serve me. You are lazy and wicked servant. Do you want to be a lazy servant? No. No. How about the rest? What do you want to be a lazy servant? Do you want to be a good and faithful servant? Yes. So starting now, think about who you can bless. Who you can help. Who you can pray for. Who you can visit and help. Because you love Jesus. You say, Jesus help me. To help that person. Everybody say, Jesus help me. Jesus help me. To bless the person. To bless the person. To help the person. To serve you. To serve you. To love other people. To love other people. So we, let us go through these five points again. Everything is in God's hand. Now, ask them to say it with you. Everything is in God's hand. And no one can run away. Can you run? Can you run away? Now, and the next point, following and obeying God will bring blessings. Do you want to follow and obey God? And love God? It will bring blessings to you. And then serving God will bring reward. So when you serve God, it will bring reward in this life and forever. And then the fourth point, living in sin will bring destruction. Say it. And the fifth point, not serving God will bring destruction. Now I want to say this very clearly. We are not saved by doing good. We are saved by grace through faith. You are saved when you trust in Jesus as your Savior. But when you are saved, then you love God and follow God and serve God. Those are the fruit of salvation. Not the way to, to be saved. Now, how are you saved? By trusting in Jesus. Trusting in Jesus. And then I'll be saved. When I'm saved, I serve God. I love God. Do you want to live like that? Do you want to look at your troubles? Okay, let us pray together. Let's stand up and pray together. Dear Heavenly Father, praise you and thank you. We worship you. You are so good. You are a wonderful God. Everything is in your hands. Lord, I want to follow you. I want to love you. When I follow you and love you, you bless us. Lord, help us to love you with all our heart, to obey you, to serve you. 
and be the good and faithful servant. And do not be the lazy and wicked servant. Oh Lord Jesus, help us to repent. Everyone stay together. Pray together. Lord, help us to repent. Forgive our sins, Lord. Forgive our sins, Lord. Help us to love you. Obey you. And serve you. We cannot run away from God. Oh, Lord Jesus. Thank you. In you there is abundant blessings. You always bless us. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Do you want to follow God? Love God. And serve God. You know, on the last day, there will be many people who has gone to church but cannot go to heaven because they don't follow God. They don't love God. They don't serve God. Do you want me to like that? No. You want to love God now, right? And love each other. And serve God in every way. And tell people about Jesus. God bless you all. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.